Frazier says, anyone got any idea why you would use Microsoft Dataverse for Teams over Microsoft Lists or SharePoint for solutions in your environment? Also, do you know the difference between Dataverse for Teams and full Dataverse? I love this question because I'm just, I'm really skilling up and I'm going back to my Microsoft Access roots here um, and that my data background. The um, There's probably three different answers to this question. Um, so first of all, the Microsoft lists are also SharePoint lists, and those were never meant to be a database. They're a great list solution, but you wouldn't want to have tens of thousands of records in that list. Plus, you can't get the relational database where you can, you know, refer and create really dynamic data management solutions with that. So they're great I, for basic I, things that you would put like an Excel spreadsheet, for example, but you wouldn't want to have like tens of thousands of records in that because then it becomes I, unmanageable. I love that, that, that yeah. guidance. It's like SharePoint is not a database <laughs> unless you're using yeah. it as a database. Yeah. <laughs> unless you're using it. Basic, basic is my world. Basic. So yeah, that, that, that works for me because less dataverse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and then the Dataverse for Teams. So you have to understand the origin of Dataverse. It used to be the common data layer that's behind um, the Dynamics infrastructure. And when you created Dynamics, there's there's some basic tables that are like accounts, contacts, um, activities that come with the management of of accounts and contracts and you know, the CRM basics. And that's what comes free with the Dataverse for Teams. You get those tables for free. The full Dataverse, you can create whatever solutions you want to. So that takes me to like my old SQL Server days. I want to create a full-blown data management, customized solution to manage my data or like my access databases I used to create. You can create whatever you want. You can create those relational databases. You can create queries on those. You can create views of your data using the data that you've created. The core tables are the ones that came from Dynamics 365 for, you know, again, contacts, activities, your companies, the um, different CRM-based ones. So, uh, but you, the Dataverse ones you can customize. That's the short answer that I can come up with for that. But yeah, SharePoint is not a database solution. It's it's a list. Like think of it like a Excel spreadsheet on steroids. And the difference between Dataverse for Teams and full Dataverse? Does anyone know that half yeah. of the question? Yeah, the Dataverse for Teams only includes those basic tables. You can't customize them. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the free article. version that comes with it. And I yeah. still love learning, you know, I come along just so I can learn. <laughs> <laughs> I, always love the, always love the, I always love the terms of free. It's included for free. It's like, no, it's included in what you're already paying. You don't get it for free. It's included in the cost. Already. But yeah. But this, the, this is this is one of those from a governance standpoint, my my thinking of this too is that, you know, are you building something for you or are you building something that is scalable for your organization? Um, that's always the 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 danger. It's the reason why you need to have for example, with uh, any power platform solution, you need to have uh, a governance review, some kind of oversight of that. So, uh, you know, so many solutions that somebody goes in, if like my five person team that we build something to help automate part of the way that we work, great. And, but for a manager to come in and be like, that's fantastic. Everybody should be using that. Well, that doesn't mean that that solution will scale. And so that's one of those things that are you building things for the, with the purpose, the intent of it being used more broadly, there's a reason why you might utilize Dataverse for Teams rather than, you know, a, a list solution. Not that a list solution can't scale again, it's just like, what is the scope? What are you trying to accomplish? And then architect the solution appropriately. And they from what you said, like Christian... Oh, sorry. sorry, they they highlight things like uh, advanced data types, uh, multiple transaction currencies, and uh, mobile offline as things that are not available in Dataverse or Teams that are available in full Dataverse. Yeah, and the the big caution to kind of tag off what you said, Christian, is that um, 
Microsoft lists, you can create them now. With, once they rebrand them, they've always been SharePoint lists for over 20 years. Welcome to my world. It was nothing new. And they said, oh, Microsoft lists. The difference is now you can create personal lists that are stored in your, um, basically your, your My SharePoint, which is your OneDrive. It, it, that's part of that storage. You have to be really careful when you create a new list where you create it, because if it's something that's business critical, that if you win the lottery and run away and you've created it in your space, it breaks and it's gone for everyone else. So you want to be real careful when you create your list that you're putting it in a place that's sustainable and scalable, like you're saying, because um, I see that a lot. People are like, oh, I created a new list. And, and I look up and I'm like, is this my share? I'm like, oh, no, this you're, you're building a, you know, time off, you know, request solution based on your stuff. And the, you know, those people leave the company, it gets broken.